in MGM. That is what is exciting. But here is the catch. So originally it wasn't gonna go. And there was the four for 40 deal that popped up. And yeah, I was like, why not, man? Absolutely, why not? So this is a vlog of the entire week of Double or Nothing. So this first half of the video will be us vlogging Dynamite and Rampage. The second half will be us vlogging Double or Nothing. So without further ado, let's hop into this. Picked everybody up. I'm here with. Hey, it's Roman. Cole, what's up? And then, yeah, we have Trevor over there, but I'm not going to show his face. I exist. Yep, he exists. So yeah, we're here at MGM, and yeah, we're about to we're about to see the show. everyone so we just got out of aw double or nothing we're gonna do the full review right here in this car right now no seat belts no seat belts so let's begin um overall what do you think about the show i would say it was way better than the saudi show but people are saying it's way better than last year's and i'm calling cap it was a good show but let's not overdo it like it was fine yeah i thought this was a really good show not one of the best AEW pay-per-views they've done, but a really good one, and I'm satisfied with my purchase. Same here. Can yeah. I complain? Yeah. Um, the, the seats we got were very nice, in my opinion, and, yeah, I just feel like it was an overall good deal. So, without further ado, let's begin with, not count in the overall grade, don't worry, people, Hardys and Hook versus Ethan Page and the Guns. I thought this was fun as hell. How about you? It was fun as hell, but... I think we should probably address the kind of issue that happened the in that match. In the room. <laughs> Just, oh yeah, the Jeff Hardy botches. There was way too many, and I'm not trying to say anything because I, I know I'm. There were pro. two. There was like two. There were two. There was the uh, turnbuckle one, and then you can say the other one if you rem remember it. No, I think that was the major one. I always him trying to take like a headbutt or something. Like he was trying to land, but the way he landed, it looked so stupid. That was, that, was, that was like the other one. So yeah, those they, those are the two potches. But outside that, everyone did pretty all right. Yeah, it, it was a good filler match, I would say. I agree. Overall, I'm going to rate it a seven and a half. Same here. Now we open the show in a massive, massive way with the AEW International Championship Battle Royal. Now, me personally, I don't really like battle royals, but it was fun as fuck. And we have the grades... We have the lineup uh, in the description below, but to make sure everybody knows this full lineup, I'll say it right here and right now. The AEW International Champion, Orange Cassidy, Swerve Strickland, Keith Lee, Brian Cage, Ricky Starks, Jay White, Juice Robinson, Ray Phoenix, Pentagon, Bandito, Commander, Dustin Rhodes, Lee Moriarty, Big Bill, Ari Davari, Tony Nese, Chuck Taylor, Trent Beretta, Kip Sabian, Butcher, and Blade. So. A very good lineup, and yeah, they all, all they all went out there and they put on one of the best battle royals I think I've ever seen in my life. So, and, and you know what the big thing is too that it felt like really added. They got most of the luchadors, so all the fast-paced guys were at the very beginning, so it wasn't much of like the past battle royals. Yeah, or it was kind of like just a slow burner. It it was really good. Yeah, start it to was fast-paced all throughout, and it was yeah thanks to some of the names that were in there like Bandito, Commander, Ray, Pentagon. They did a lot of the heavy lifting. Uh, in that match mm -hmm. and then you have the storyline stuff with Ricky Starks and Jay and then you also have the storyline stuff with Keith Lee and Swerve then the final with Orange and Swerve was fantastic and I think that's going to lead to a championship match where Swerve might be the one to take his title it depends if they save this for collision or not or I don't know how long before they will take this feud but Orange Cassidy is doing pretty good for the most part I would say they would want like the first episode of Collision or Forbidden Door those two places to be big so yeah, I could see it going like that. I didn't expect too much of this Battle Royal. Man, I was glad to be proven wrong. Mm -hmm. Overall, I'm going to rate this son of a bitch an 8 out of 10. I'm actually going to give it a 9, dude, because I really enjoyed my time with it. Nine. It was really good for the first time ever. Yeah, it was. Now, a lot of people are not happy with the second match. It is the unsanctioned match, Adam Cole versus Chris Jericho. When the match began, the JAS uh, was brawling with Adam Cole, Roderick Strong, 
and then Sabu decided to say, fuck this shit, I'm stepping in. He had a chair war with Chris Jericho that he ultimately won, and then he did a top turnbuckle splash through a table to the outside to one of the members of JAS. So, yeah, that was that was all Sabu did. No, that's bullshit, dude. I expected more. I don't give a fuck if he's like 58. We all- Ric Flair could do this just as good as Sabu. All Sabu did was do a fucking swing of the chair and then a fucking belly flop into a table and just fucking dipped. Where was he? Kyle wasn't there. This is bullshit. (laughs) 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 Fucking Sabu. (laughs) I pay to see you. Uh, Man. Okay, I'm done. He's almost six years old and Ric Flair almost died the last time he stepped inside the ring. He was not doing doing flips. He was not doing splashes off a top turnbuckle. Whatever. But besides that, what else did you think about the match? So, the match itself was decent like there were some cool moments in there for sure but i felt like they could have done a lot more knowing these two performers and i get that jericho is someone else who's also going up there in age but i know what jericho is still capable of and i know adam cole is capable of and while this was decent i feel like it could have been better and my rating is a six and a half you know i'll keep it safe it was a seven i mean there was some cool spots with the fire extinguisher but it just felt kind of too safe if that makes sense. Like, it wasn't bad necessarily, but it was kind of like, I don't know, it was like, whatever. Yeah. I had fun with it, but it wasn't, like, the greatest thing I saw. Yeah, I get that. I get that. So, that's the unsanctioned match. Now, we move on to the AEW Tag Team Championship match. I ended up seeing some highlights and stuff, and overall, I'm going to give the match a 7. I don't, I still hate Jeff Jarrett. I always will. You bastard. But the drama in the match was somewhat entertaining and solid but it was nothing too crazy too, what do you mean nothing too crazy Aubrey got hit in the head with a fucking guitar oh yeah what that, do you mean? that was that was insane yeah um, spot of the night right there in my opinion most base thing you Jared know what wife did. second best spot of the night Jared's wife Karen sign her up you know what make her one of the ladies I don't like Jeff but Karen can stay in AEW <laughs> I guess that's fine that's a good conversation we can stick with yeah so overall 7 out of 10 Mm, same, same. You're going seven out of ten as well. Yeah. You really enjoyed the match, though. I feel like I, I know I liked it, but let's be real here. It's because I'm a fanboy for slap nuts because of all the memes and Marky D and all. So that shit. realistically, you'll give it a seven. Yeah. We won't fa- for the TNT Championship. We got Wardlow versus no. Christian Cage. No. You're clearly feeling some emotions. Talk about it. I'm, I'm feeling that like they chose the wrong champion. I mean, Wardlow's kind of over with, in my opinion. Mm. What What else he's gonna do? Well, what else could he possibly do now? That's not true. What else could he do? He could still grow as a performer. He could eventually go on to become an AEW champion and all that sort of stuff. He's not going to be AEW champion because Christian Cage should have been the winner tonight. There was so much story, dude. How are you going to like toss Christian Cage like that? It might be a hot take, but he's a damn good heel. He had the likes of Jungle Boy and with this view too. Sure, he just makes the same shit. It's like, your dad's dead. Your dad's dead, dude. That's all he needs to say. It's the most fucking Listen, shit thing. Wardlow kind of got pitched out the whole feud. He kind of needed this one. What feud? He lost to Samoa Joe, and Hobbs should have fucking. I'm talking retained. about Christian, he's been he was attacked every week. Was his dad was insulted, and all this other sort of stuff. Wardlow didn't get one bit of one bit of anything over Christian Luchasaurus throughout the week. So he needed this, or and or else if he lost, he would have looked like an absolute bitch who just took. An absolute spit over his dad's legacy and his own legacy. Yeah, I'm, you know, ever ever dad's wrestler is pretty much dead at this point, dude. That's I mean, not an excuse. Look at Cody eating with the belt, and his daddy passed away too. Yeah, a yeah, harsh life lesson for people. But um, yeah, the ladder match itself was great. Wardlow did like a nice swanton off the top of the ladder through a table, like Jeff Hardy has always done. But he did it really so, shitty tonight. What? He did it real bad today. Wardlow. No, 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 Jeff. Well, no, Warlow did a good... I mean, Jeff did a good swan tongue. I guess. <laughs> but anyway. But overall, uh, I'll give the match an 8. And I'll give it 8, too, because, like I said, I'm this is a bit disappointed with how it turned out. But there were so many crazy spots, and then plus with Warlow, I think he almost took, like, a bump to his neck, right? During one of his ladder attacks, or was that Christian Cage? It was, it was, it was one of them. Yeah, but overall, 8 out of 10. Mm-hmm. Now for this part of the video, we kind of have to rant. Um, so, 
The AEW Women's Championship match, Jamie Hayter versus Tony Storm. Now, we kind of knew something was up due to the whole injury and shit that Jamie has been suffering. Mm-hmm. And I understand why they went about this the way they did. But considering that we paid live to see it, it was disappointing from our point of view. But I understand it. So, I don't know what I can really say. It, it's unfortunate. It really is. It's very unfortunate. Hopefully, Jamie recovers and gets that title back as soon as possible. But they buried her. They buried they her. They buried her real hard, dude. I don't understand your dude, view. They point. buried her. I don't understand. They your attacked view her. Point. They made her look weak. They attacked no. her from backstage. It was so not yeah. Cool. It was three people. If anything, Tony is the one who looks like a joke because she had to get two other people to go and attack her opponent before the bell started. Before the match is starting. If anything, Tony is the one who got buried here because it took three people. To, to take out Jamie Hayter. That's true. But still, that could have been a different way. So or why even book this fucking match to begin with if she was just Right, just relinquish it? Jamie, then do a mini tournament and have the finals at that were nothing. That could work too, but I guess this was a last minute thing at the end of the day, so we can't beat them up too much. We didn't know this injury would be as effective as it was. Yeah. So I guess no rating on just to be fair. No rating, but it is genuinely, genuinely disappointing. House Rules, House of Black versus The Acclaim for the AEW Trios Championship. That was a very fun match. Everyone put in an effort, and yeah, overall I'm going to give it a seven and a half. I'm seeing here, but you know who the victim of the night was? Was Buddy Matthews. Dude, Matt Caster didn't have to call him a cuck in front of everybody <laughs> because the entire time he went to perform, like it was excellent that people were just shouting Dominic the whole fucking time, and then Rhea Ripley too, on Mommy Chance too. It was fucking ridiculous. It was such a good match, but I think that kind of ruined it. Because everyone was just fucking trolling. The Walter. acclaimed violated House of Black. It's not cool, bro. And then Daddy Ass didn't even get it in the fucking ring until like 10 minutes in the match. And when, But when he did, he cooked. He cooked for three seconds and got his ass kicked. Well, listen, his, that's all we need from him. His, he has a grand no. presence. No, that's, grand that's not presence. good enough. His kids last longer than he did. And they fucking suck. <laughs> Um, what would you rate the um, what would you rate the match? I'm gonna give it a seven and a half. I enjoyed my time with it. <laughs> gotcha. Awesome. So we got the TBS championship match, Jade Cargill versus Ty Valkyrie. And I thought it was decent. I can't say it was one of the worst matches Jade Cargill has had. Um, you know, Ty is a good wrestler though, so it makes sense why this match was decent. And yeah, overall, I'm going to give it a six. Something huge happens after the match, and I like how Tony Khan and AEW play with our emotions on this one. So that's all I'll leave that for now before we dive into this. Mm-hmm. And same here. But you want to do the big reveal now? Yep. The real money maker for this match? Sure. So after the bell rings, you know, Jade retains, and you know, we're all like, God fucking damn it! Can somebody just end this already? You know, sixty and zero. We're tired, and then, you know, Mark Sterling decided to get on the mic, be the idiot that he is, <laughs> talk some shit, and say, Jade is unstoppable, she's 60 and 0, and even though she just fought, she can do it again, she can fucking do and it again. against anyone possible, which, again, shows just exactly how cocky she has gotten recently, so, yeah, um, Chris Statlander ended up returning, and she dethroned Jade Cargill for the TBS championship, and the match was a squash, basically. But it, I'm glad it was. It needs to be because at this point, you need someone just as strong as Jade Cargill. Well, Jade just had a match. If Jade had another big match after her match with Taya, that would have buried Taya. That's true. So think about it. Jade beat Taya, but she barely had anything left in her for Chris. So it made Taya still look good. Good, and hopefully her title reign runs for a very long time. Well. I wouldn't say not as crazy as Jade's 16. Yeah, we can't do like, we can't do 16 months. We can't do nah. a 16 month title reign with Chris. We have to make this title mean something. So, yeah. Uh, overall, I give the whole thing a six. And yeah, six too. And also, too, one last thing before we end. So the next segment, Jade Cargill actually provided diversity for once, and that's really cool because there were some sick moves that she's done, like over the ropes, 
and more athletic things that she like can do. Like, you mean she's switching it up more now? Yeah, like, she should. She's athletic. She's built different, and, you know, she could do more than just, the like, training, power bombs The training with Brian Danielson is finally starting to pay off. Good. <laughs> well, she could become a champion when she does, like, more interesting things again. Well, that's the thing. She has the look of a champion. Yeah, and the attitude. And, and the talks. And the attitude. Yeah, all of it. It's just, yeah, she needs to improve in the ring more and more. And tonight, uh, she did a decent job. I, mm -hmm. I'm not even going to shout on that. So, if she continues to do solid performances, then, yeah, I would not have a problem with you pushing her. Same here. So, yeah, that's all we'll say for now. Congratulations, Chris Statlander. We're glad to have you back. All right, four pillars, fatal four-way for the AEW Championship. I'm kind of surprised this did not main event the show. How about you? No, I mean, at first I was, but after seeing, you know, event what the main event, Anarchy like, in the Arena is, you know, I'm fine with it. They made the right decision. At first I was thinking it was the wrong decision because I'm like, well, this kind of buries your four pillars, but then I thought about it more and it's like, well, they're not top in the main event, are they? No. Yeah. So but they came pretty damn close, though. This was a great match. This was a great match. Now, I'll say this. I think well, all of them, and including MJF, still have more to, uh, to grow. These aren't the best versions of themselves. Not yet, but they're getting pretty damn close Even to Sammy it. Guevara. I don't like Sammy. A lot of people know I don't like Sammy. But even I guarantee that this current version of him right now isn't going to be as good of... You know what he could be in let's say three or five years you know he's going to be in a couple of months a father yes that was um, announced right before the uh cue cards and it kind of makes sense because ty hasn't been wrestling for quite a while and you know they got married um sometime last year so you know what it made sense timeline wise it made sense so congratulations sammy guevara i will give you that um, but we still hate you. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't even gonna say that. But we still that, hate that, you. That's all him. But but yeah yeah. Um, <laughs> all right now back to reality. So yeah. Um, fuck Sammy Guevara. <laughs> okay no no. Um, the match was great though. I feel like my whole thing was that it was just a lot of spots in a way. Mm -hmm. And the only real story thread throughout the match I feel was the headlock takeover between MJF and Darby. But between all four guys, there wasn't really that urgency in that thread. Well, I mean, to be fair, this whole field, it was mostly just Darby and MJF carrying this entire and to thing. Give my, and to give another critique, the match definitely was at its least interesting when it was Jungle Boy and Sammy one-on-one -on -one fighting. Yeah, but I mean, they were just good spot monkeys for what it was. It was good. <laughs> yeah. I'm just saying, Daniel, yeah. it's fine. <laughs> no. I mean, they are, I mean, they, they kind of are that. Let's, let's not even beat around the bush. But yeah. it's fair. It is completely fair. Um, what else do I want to say about it? I guess you can say that the submissions were pretty cool. Like four ways. Oh, submission yeah, the was four cool. submissions at the same time. That was sick. Um, oh, yeah. And then they all hit the finishers of their mentors. So that was sick. Very cool. But there there were some dumb moments like Darby and I hitting his coffin drop when he had like plenty of time like I think it was well, like in the no it was match. the MJF thing but they but he did yeah he hit the coffin drop and mm -hmm. then he got him up instead of going for the pin he tried to do the headlock takeover he tried to beat him with the headlock takeover but it wasn't gonna happen yep because yeah I guess he wasn't urgent enough on, on that and then the one thing that threw me off super hard was MJF hitting uh, uh fuck what's it called I can't believe I'm forgetting. Cody Rhodes finisher, there we go. Yeah, like I said, the mentors, because Cody was the one that brought MJF into AEW and all that stuff. And then we got, of course, you get the fucking WWE chants in the crowd. That was kind of funny. He was like, Cody! He's confirmed. So yeah, we got we got a few Cody chants when he did the crossroads. But there no. You go. Um, overall, my rating for this is an eight and a half because I feel like they could have done even better. And what they offered here and if they do have another fatal four-way in the future which i doubt i feel like this was it mm -hmm. but if they do have another fatal four-way in a few years that would probably be better yeah and when they eventually grow up well not grow up but you know what i mean grow as performers grow as go. individuals then yeah because that's my whole thing i feel like jack and sammy and uh, you know they still have some growing to do before they can be taken seriously as the AEW champion because there wasn't really one moment in this match where I believe either the two had it won. No, but I will say even though that MJF did win, it was very creative of how he did it. 
Like it Darby, was, <laughs> Darby, there was a few moments where I thought Darby had it, mm -hmm. but that was really it. Yeah, but go out and watch it. You can obviously see in the pay per views or whatever yeah, on if, Twitter it, or any. It, it felt like it. it felt it felt like MJF smashed the win. I mean, shit, he was getting fucking cheered, dude, like over everybody. Yeah, that was kind of cool. Which to see. I kind of expected. I just I, I don't. He's been on TV more than all three of them and all that stuff. He's been featured more than all three of them. I expect that for sure. Um, yeah, eight and a half. And same here, eight and a half too. So now the main event. Shit's about to hit the fan because we're talking about anarchy in the arena too. Um, Blackpool Combat Club versus the Elite. So, are the Blackpool Combat Club going to lose their own match for a second year in a row? Go Fuck no. Two? They didn't. They actually won this time. And last year felt like they should have won. But it's okay. They kind of wrote that wrong here, I guess you could say. Yeah. We all kind of expected... Well, not we all. But a lot of people expected the wholesome Elite reunion to, you know, happen at that pay-per-view. But no. No, no, no. Kenosuke returned. And he Bastard. is now on the dark side as he took out um, Kenny Omega in the ring. Yeah. And it led to where you would have gained the pinfall and winning for the team. And, you know, Moxley, Claudio, Brian are all world champs. They're all established guys. You didn't need that moment. So that was cool for him. Exactly. Um, Did you feel like this was better than the first Inacree from last year? No. No. I feel like. Last year was far more crazy. However, this did come close. That's what I will say. The exploding super kick was the most insane thing I saw in the entire night. Not even Hank Man taking the uh, the thumbtack to his forehead. Like that was that looked nasty. Oh no, that was gnarly too. Um, and then one, and then the Young Bucks. You know how I feel about the Young Bucks. They fucking cooked tonight. That I will have to give it to them. They, they always cooked, man. They definitely did. Um, there, one of the young bucks was doing like Northern Light Suplex all the way from the ramp down. That was impressive, mm -hmm. definitely impressive. I will have to say that. And what else can I say? Oh yeah, the uppercut with with one of the young bucks having thumbtacks in their mouth. Really, Claudio fucking hitting. I think it was Matt. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it was like Matt Jackson into yeah. the trash can with a super superhero spin. Yeah, and then. Yeah, my only critique about this match is that the camera work was just not that great. There was some stuff, a lot, a lot going on at the same time, just like the first match. But I feel like the camera crew was just not as good at keeping up no. as the last year's was. Um, oh yeah, the fucking Claudio swing into the goddamn can. That was fucking funny. That was fucking awesome. Like the match was fantastic, fan fucking tastic. Um, as expected, I'm glad they lived up to the anarchy in the arena thing. Here's my opinion. This is just an opinion. I think anarchy in the arena, double at double or nothing. This needs to be every single year. It's going to be. This needs to be the staple of what double or nothing is. This match, every time, is fucking awesome. And there's nothing like this match. Nope. For the rest of the year. Which is why we need this every fucking year at Double or Nothing. I believe that. Because, sure, people might get sick of that, you say, but I'm not. That's I'm not, for damn and it's sure. A fucking draw I, can hear, I can hear Wild Thing and see everyone brawling over and over and over and over and over again and not get sick of it. That they, is my opinion. They also super kicked the fucking scene girl ball thing, so that was pretty funny. Yeah, they were like, we had enough of this shit. Enough. And then the drummer just doing like the little thing, the little <laughs> end to the song as he got super kicked was great. <laughs> like, alright guys, we've been performing for like yeah. 20 minutes. Yeah, so it was fantastic. It was a fantastic main event. The best match of the whole show. Without a shadow um, of a doubt. I'm going to go as far as to say the best match of the weekend. Say, having said that, we have not seen NXT yet. Nope. So if Ilya and Dijak had a better match, then I apologize in advance, but or we don't know Braun that. Or Braun Baker. Or Braun versus Carmelo. Mm -hmm. If any of those matches are better, we apologize in advance. But we, have, we haven't we have seen it yet, so we don't know. We are going to review WWE and NXT later this week. Uh, we just wanted to get the AEW stuff out right now because we went here live and, you know, it's a bigger experience for us than seeing the shows from home and that's what WWE and NXT are and yeah I feel like going live is also a good way to give an unbiased take I mean I feel like I'm good with giving this unbiased take on this 
setting that we have gone live. Same with Chris here. Yeah. We, we, we could both be sucking the ever-loving chilled off this show, but... Pause. That's sus. <laughs> Don't fucking say that ever again. <laughs> <laughs> but we could be sucking the ever loving truth out of this show but the truth is is that we're not going to what we will say is that it was pretty solid it was pretty good it was a good pay-per-view but before we end it do you want do you want us to say what kenny fucking told everyone after they saw off cameras he said tonight wasn't his night but he does have a friend or two that may help equal out the odds so good night, good bang. That's not what. It's going on bullshit. But yeah, Cole is coming to AEW eventually. I'm sure by for, uh, Forbidden Door he'll show up. Yes. Maybe sooner. I don't know. Yes, he's showing up within these next few weeks for sure. So be on the lookout, folks. Overall, let's rate this. I'm going to give this a seven and a half out of ten. And then I'm going to give it an eight. There are, oh shit, hey, there you go. <laughs> nice. Fuck, got it. Very nice. Yep, that was our review, that was our vlog. If you all sat through all of this, we thank you guys. Please hit that like, please hit that sub, please comment. Do it all, man, do it all, please. And once again, most importantly, take it easy. Sayonara.